Hello YouTube, let's check out how to use a bounded semaphore with Python to limit the number of threads running at the same time within our program. I'm going to import threading. And for this example, I'm also going to need the slip function from the time library. And let's define some func, some function, so we can uh, test this. And we're just gonna need an ID as an argument here. The only thing this function is going to do is print i am um, thread and here just the id of this thread and uh, we are also going to make it wait a little bit before it returns okay great and uh, now let's start a, a loop for i in uh, range 0 to 10 we're gonna start 10 threads of this function the target will be some come on give it to me okay some funk and the arguments it's just going to be i we're gonna start every thread immediately and let's run this and see what's gonna happen without the semaphore okay every thread started immediately and every thread is waiting for five seconds almost at the same time and now the program is finished after five seconds so let's now include our limiter. I'm going to define it here. It's going to be a bounded semaphore from the uh, threading library. We need to give a limit of threads that we want to have at the same time. Let's say three. And now we need to edit our threaded function. And I'm just going to add at the very beginning. Uh, I'm going to access this object that is a global variable, let's say. Uh, and I'm going to acquire a lock, one of these three locks, let's let's call it like that. And before it returns, I'm, I'm also going to release this lock. Uh, release. And now if I execute this, you will see that only three threads will start. And uh, after this lifespan, let's say five seconds finishes, the next three threads will begin. And after five seconds, the, th the next three and this is great for protecting your program from exceptions uh, like um, memory usage for example if you were threading without limits a function that has uh, that is actually doing something because this is just printing when one message waits and returns but if there were heavy calculations happening here i don't know something that has actually memory usage uh, you would probably get an exception that has to do with uh, the available memory on your system. We could have achieved the same result with just a semaphore. We don't need to use a bounded semaphore. The behavior is the same, but there is a difference between these two objects and it's uh, quite significant. I think this issue, this answer right here, describes this very well. A semaphore can be released more times than it's acquired and that will raise its counter above the starting value. Meaning that if you define a semaphore and you release more times than you have actually acquired this number the starting value will actually go up and a bounded semaphore can't be raised above the starting value meaning if you do the same i mean release more than you acquire with a bounded semaphore your program is going to throw an error and i think there's a use case for both this uh, uh, object's behavior for example maybe you want to abuse uh, let's say in double quotes uh, the release function to raise this number at some point in your program or maybe you would just want to have strict uh, limits, use a bounded semaphore, and if there is an exception, uh, if there is an error, you can handle it in a particular way that you will program yourself.